Thank you. So thank you, you all for being here, uh, especially uh, online in these circumstances. So my name is Ignacio Hidalgo, not uh, Nuno Lorenzo, since uh, I opened the, the room, but uh, with the key of uh, Nuno. Um, I'm going to present you the, the work uh, title, Short and Medium Term Glucose Prediction, Using Multi-Objective Grammatical Evolution. Uh, it's part of the work of the PhD thesis of uh, Sergio Contador, and it uh, was developed uh, in collaboration with the University of Juan Carlos and the Universidad Complutense de Madrid, both in Spain. Um, in, in this work, we investigate the, the benefits of applying a multi-objective approach for solving a symbolic regression problem, uh, in particular, uh, the model, the glucose levels in blood diabetic patients. Um, uh, with an approach uh, using grammatical evolution. This work was developed uh, some time ago as a parallel task uh, and, uh, in other works we, we perform. But uh, recently we, we go to an in-depth analysis uh, on, on this data and we think that uh, it could be a good idea to share with you um, the, um, the conclusions and the results of this uh, multi-objective approach just for could be useful for other approaches um, for this presentation i will follow the this uh, online first i will give just two ideas about the the diabetes problem we are dealing with also although the important thing is in my opinion is uh, the, the the symbolic regression approach uh, and and the, we, we will describe how, how this uh, symbolic regression is performed. Uh, I will give some details about the implementation, the grammars we use, and the uh, algorithms. And I will present you some experimental results uh, of, the, of the work. Uh, so just for putting the, the problem, uh, we are uh, working since uh, the last years, uh, since uh, as, uh, several years ago, and um, on problems related to diabetes and we have a, now a, a good set of data for working on this um in particular we we are trying to to help people with diabetes on predicting the the level of glucose the, the diabetes is a group of diseases uh, characterized by a high level of blood glucose levels in, in the and um, depending on the on the cause uh, of the of the diabetes uh, we talk or type 1 or type 2 the type 1 diabetes is a usually uh, appear usually in the in the early ages in the teenagers and and the, the type 1 is more uh, after the 50s uh, usually um in any case uh, when the the disease is uh, in a uh, in a, in a step where the the, the patient needs to, to put the insulin to supply the the effect of the of the pancreas, uh, they need to to decide how much insulin they need to put in the body. This is a global problem. Uh, this is a, we have now more than 400 million people suffering diabetes. Um, the, the the idea is to 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 continue working on this problem from the next year. Uh, the objective of the of the diabetic patient is, as I told you, to put insulin in order to maintain healthy levels of the blood, blood glucose levels. In particular, we usually talk about the the timing range. Um, the Diabetes uh, Association, International Diabetes Federation, talk about this uh, timing range. That uh, the higher the timing, the timing range. That is the uh, glucose level between 70 and 180 milligrams per deciliter, deciliter um, is the better. Um, and this is what we, we want to, 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 to help is uh, to, to make a, a recommendation on insulin. But we change a bit the, the problem. And we, what we try is to evaluate uh, the effect of the, of the dose of insulin. Uh, and construct a predictive model for evaluating uh, the, the value of, of glucose using uh, or supposing those recommendations. 
And in here, where we want to evaluate is what's, what's is, is the benefit of using a, a, a multi-objective approach with NSGA2 uh, to, to the previous uh, or the most basic solution with grammatical evolution. So uh, in this uh, work, and now we are using more more features with other with other devices. But in this work, we use uh, uh, the information of the continuous glucose monitor system, uh, a device uh, uh, which gives us observation of a, uh, interstitial uh, glucose value of every five minutes. Uh, we also have uh, notes of estimated uh, carbohydrate units ingested by by the patient and sometimes also some uh, uh, amounts uh, measured by the particular uh, devices. And also we have the, the, the amount of insulin injected using uh, uh, insulin pump and insulin fossil divide, um, also registered uh, uh, every five minutes for both the basal and the bolus insulin. The basal is the, the, the insulin that is needed to maintain the, the level of glucose during all the day. And the bolus is the special insulin, the, or the, the special amount of insulin that the, the patient put in the body when he or she wants to uh, control uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the main lines. So as I told you, we have now more advanced works that you can find in, in, in other papers. Uh, in particular, we have some, some results uh, in the last uh, applied of computer journal where they are uh, a bit improved, uh, improved version of these two works. And also you can find other work using genetic programming like uh, Ivan and Falco also usually in, on those conferences. Um, and uh, here, uh, as I told you, we are uh, tacking or we want to evaluate uh, the symbolic regression. So we have four horizons for prediction, four prediction, sorry. Um, what we make here is just to, to make a set of data where we have all the entries or all the features for these values. That is the, um, the historical information of two hours previous to the moment of prediction. As, as we want to evaluate uh, insulin recommendations, we can uh, put in the equations uh, the, the, the insulin we are going to put uh, in, the, in the horizon or in the moment of the prediction, and the same for uh, the carbohydrates. So having the knowledge of historical um, data for glucose, insulin, and carbohydrates, and supposing an amount of insulin and carbohydrates, what, uh, what uh, will be the glucose in the next uh, time horizon, in particular 30 minutes, 60, 90, and 120 minutes. And we, uh, as I told you, we, we evaluate here uh, the benefit of using a multi-objective approach, just for those that are not familiarized with, with the, with the uh, concept, uh, the, instead of uh, speaking about a uh, data solution is better than one, when we have more than one objective, we speak our domination concept. No? So here we have a representation of a set of solutions to objective F1 and F2, both minimizing, so the global optimal will be the point in the origin. And uh, we can say that the solution P1 and P2 are better in terms of uh, multi-objective than P3 because they dominate the solution since uh, both are better for uh, at least one of the objective and not, but, uh, not worse for the other one. So P1 is better than P3 for, for objective F2 and since it's lower, um, is it equal to P3? And in the case of P2, we can say that it's uh, better for both uh, objectives. So P1 and P2 dominate P3. So instead of looking for a, just for a solution, we look for a Pareto from the solution that we can uh, um, say that are equivalent, okay? So are in quality. But uh, 
remember this uh, this uh, front because in the solution uh, in the experimental results i will give you uh, one indication of, of this solution and here we the most uh, the main contribution of the paper is to the, to develop a, a special uh, fitness function uh, or particular fitness function uh, we use uh, root mean square error as user there are also other uh, approaches using variations of root mean square error but we use here root mean square error um uh, we uh, develop a, or design a, a special uh, function that tend into account the severity of the misprediction. In particular, we uh, use the Clark error grid, which is a grid uh, usually uh, used in the in the field of diabetes for um, uh, assessing the 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 errors or, or the the severity of the misprediction. And we divide the, this grid in five zones, and we can assess uh, the the predictions uh, in the um, in zones A and B. But we will try, or we will try to um, avoid prediction in zones C, D, and E because they are uh, more dangerous for the patient. So this is what we include here in the in the function. And we account, uh, in depending on the severity and and like an a usual uh, penalization uh, function, but in this case we use a like a, a known function. So we try to reduce the number of misprediction and uh, in the zone C, D, and E, and uh, with the different weights. And uh, we use the, the same basic grammar as in, 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 in previous work we present also in other workshops uh, organized by Stefano and Stephen. Uh, just because we want to isolate the, the, um, the effect of the multi objective approach. Um, uh, sorry. Um, uh, in this case, we, we, we have other work with the uh, with better results using another grammar, but we want to isolate this this effect, as, as you can see later. And we have um, a data, data set of ten patients. As, uh, in this case, is a, a well set of, uh, of points because, as Francesco said in the previous presentation, uh, to get the data from medical information is uh, quite difficult. And this is a quite good uh, data set that give us a lot of information here. Uh, what is important is to see this column, the last one, where is the time in range, in range of, the, of the patients. Um, you can see uh, the, 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 the time in range is very low uh, because, um, oh, oh, and this indicates that the, that the patient uh, uh, has a lot of variability, so the prediction is a bit difficult. Okay, and well, this is the the most important information in this table. You can see other uh, statistical information in the in the and the full table because here it's not full and uh, in the in the paper. And here are the experimental results. First, uh, this uh, figure uh, present here um, the a combination of the um, uh, multi objective or single objective approach. In red, you can see the single objective, and in blue, the multi objective. Uh, we have here uh, for one of the patients, uh, that is the representative uh, of, of all the results, um, for the four different horizons, starting from 30 minutes, 60, 90, and 120. Um, as you can see, uh, the solutions uh, of the single objective are dominated by, by the multi objective approach. We are representing here the solution of technique with root mean square error for uh, um, grammatical evolution, but representing also the number of misprevisions uh, in the source. So we, you, we can see here that the solutions are uh, dominated by, by the multi objective approach. But it's interesting, uh, of course. It could be that the multi-objective approach, uh, especially in the higher time horizons, 
improve a lot the, the solution of the, of the, of the problem. You can see also that the solution here um, uh, are not the, in, in the, the, the pictures on, on a, a Pareto from because this is not exactly the same representation as the fitness function. Remember that we have a set of weights. So we are not seeing here the set of, uh, of points, but we can see here by the solution are dominated in terms of a practical point of view for the for the daily life of the patient here now uh, we see for two different patients that represent are representative uh, uh, of all the results also the um, all the horizons are at the same time i put those two because uh, there are two results very interesting here of course as as the time horizon is increases, uh, we, we, we obtain worse results because of the difficulty of the prediction. But still we can see here that even with the grammatical evolution, we find um, we found some good results in terms of the missed predictions. Okay. Um, but for example, with the multi-objective approach, for several of the patients, we found the global optimal in this case. We checked this even several times because we thought it was an error. But no, it's correct. We obtained the zero misprevision in the zone C, D, and E, and also with the root mean square error for the test, especially for some of the cases. So I put this in the result because it was special. And another one, we increased the root mean square error, but uh, it was uh, bigger. And the other uh, interesting thing is in the, in the figure of patient five. Here we can see, for instance, um, this prediction for 120. And this is the uh, usual case in the multi objective approach. We obtain a lot of, pro of um, solution in the Pareto front. But um, uh, here uh, we, we have that, uh, for instance, this solution uh, is uh, very good in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, the missed predictions and a bit high in terms of the room in square or anyway, for, for our problem, we will select this one because uh, what is important is the security, the safety of the, of the patient. Here we can see two points, we will see in the next the slide. And here we also analyze um, the, the results for different, uh, for the different fold. We made a 10 fold close validation. So we represent here each color on with it's a fall. Again, we can see, of course, that uh, different falls have a uh, different uh, difficulty, which is uh, usual, so it's important for the evaluation. And also, um, again, we can see here the effect of the multi objective approach, how it's possible to obtain a very good solution in this case. Um, also, it's important we use these uh, results in, uh, in recent works for uh, doing the classification of the data as in the, in the previous approach. Uh, uh, and uh, we, we use this for classifying the data and, and obtaining um, models for each uh, of, the, of the classificated uh, instances. Um, this is, uh, the, uh, those are the results. As I told you, we can, you can find um, more recent results in, in, in recent papers. And as I told you, the, the idea of this paper was to analyze the multi-objective implementation. We conclude that uh, the multi-objective approach can obtain better models and reducing the number, the number of predictions in the most dangerous zones for some of the patients. Uh, and in combination with other uh, things uh, that we present in the recent paper could be a good approach. Now we are working on uh, including another variables from um, activity uh, devices uh, with hair rates and, and, and other things related to the quality of the sleep. Um, and we are working on, on this now with uh, not only with grammatical evolution, but also with another uh, technique like neural networks and the most. Uh, development now uh, techniques. So this was our presentation. Thank you for your attention. We thank the, the Spanish government for the grants.
and also Fundación Eugenio Rodríguez Pascual and uh, Regional Government of Madrid for helping us with the support of this of this work. Thank you very much, and I open to questions. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so if anybody has any questions, if you can raise a hand, please, or put something in the chat. Hi, I, I have a question. Hi, yeah, please go ahead. Uh, yes, I, I, I would like to ask sorry. you. No, no, sorry. Can you hear me? Then you now. I can hear you now. Thanks yeah. a lot. Uh, I would like to ask you because uh, for me, um, GA and all the family of algorithms are really bad in trying to, in a way, uh, predicting uh, outcomes in the future. Uh, what I mean is not like a typical reinforcement learning when you have some kind of reward that would give you this kind of hint of the future. And I, I, perhaps I don't, I don't, I didn't understand well. When when you measure this kind of uh, severity of the MIS prediction, you do it in the present, or you try to infer from the future. From the future. So what we make here is we, we construct a, a symbolic regression model with the training, and then we apply to a test data. So the, the then we represent the, the test data prediction uh, with the actual value. That we have uh, separated from the from the test data, so it's uh, in the future. Okay, then is the the regression model that you have is the one that gives you this kind of hint of the future? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we 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 construct uh, one uh, model for each uh, time horizon. So we are just doing a symbolic regression. First, we preprocess the data to to prepare it just to to. Cook to tackle like a symbolic regression. Okay, thank you very much for clarifying me that. Thank you, Marta. Okay, we got a uh, question from uh, Pedro as well. Um, let's unmute Pedro. Oh, it won't let me do it. Um, Pedro, can you try unmuting your um, microphone? Uh, I have a question here of, of Bill, Bill Landon. And I can answer if you want, uh, Stephen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bill is asking if I I can produce uh, one model. I uh, know if I produce one model or one model per patient, and do the doctor the doctors make sense of your model? Uh, yes, we we pro produce uh, not only a model in, the, in our last uh, implementation, just a, a set of models that we combine uh, in a like uh, of a budging uh, process. And yes, uh, our approach here is uh, to to produce uh, one model uh, for each patient, um, trying to to particularize for the, the particularity. Sorry for the repetition of each model and um, the, the doctors uh, I mean it makes sense for our model as we are not uh, uh, applying a physiological model what they, they ask uh, ask it us is to to explain the predictions we are making and just in our group uh, uh, we have uh, two endocrinologists uh, working with us and now, now they are convinced uh, and make sense of these uh, kind of models. And we, in fact, we prepare some some works in for for the medical for medical journals. Great. Thanks very much. Um, that's super. Thanks very much again for the talk. Um,